everybody, this is International Master Jesse Cry with another ChessLecture.com video. And today I'm going to be doing an opening survey of one E4. Okay, so E4 is probably the most popular move uh, both today and in the history of chess. Uh, it is a very simple move. You're fighting for the center and you're bringing out already or enabling two pieces to come out immediately, your bishop on f1 and your queen on d1. And in general, I think you can say that any opening move that fights for the center and helps you bring out your pieces is going to be at least a reasonable move. Okay, so what I thought I'd do today is I'd go through, probably the best way I thought to do this was to go through all of black's possible moves, or at least the most logical. And um, I thought I'd do an interesting experiment where I'd try to summarize each of the moves that black could make in three sentences or less. I don't know if I'll be successful, but I'll try. And I think that my idea with that is just to um, give you a sense of all the possibilities that are able for possible for black, and also not to get too tied up in ideas of theory, but to realize that really any move that black makes uh, that fights for the center and helps bring out his pieces is going to have some basic ideas behind it, and it's going to be reasonable. Okay, so let's look. I'm going to first go through all of the moves I'm going to look at quickly, and then we'll return to them in order. Okay, so here, first we'll, there's two very basic moves which are traditional and fight for the center immediately, both e5 and c5, the first being the king's pawn opening, probably the most studied opening history of man, and the second the Sicilian. And then we have kind of what I call the crouch openings. We have the French, and we have the Karo Khan. So the first we had the traditional and then the crouch openings, and then uh, maybe a third group would be the, what might be called the hypermodern openings. This, for example, is called the perk. And also this, knight f6, immediately attacking e4, the alakine. And maybe in a class all by itself, is the center counter or Scandinavian with d5. Okay, so those are just all the possible moves, briefly put. Now let's go back. So what I'm going to try to do, as I said before, is I'll try to give each of these moves and then a brief synopsis of what their ideas are. Okay, now the first two, the king's pawn and the zillion, probably the most studied uh, in terms of theory. Let's look at e5 first. Very simple and straightforward. Black is fighting inch for inch for every bit of space and time that white is going to give him. Um, and here we can have any number of possible replies for white, but the basic idea of blacks, no matter what happens, is to bring out his pieces just as fast, to fight for the center just as much as white, and basically to go toe for toe with every step that white makes. Okay, so that's E5. Let's look at C5, the Sicilian. Also very theoretical these days, but really with a very simple idea. And that is that really the only way for White to make good progress is for him to play the move D4 at some point. For example, let's say Knight F3, D6, D4. Why D4? Well, d4 helps white bring out this bishop, increases the scope of the queen, and fights for the center. But black's idea, regardless of what setup he chooses, there are so many different setups in the Sicilian, his basic idea is going to be to trade this c5 pawn for the d4 pawn. And what that will enable is that will enable black to have more center pawns. So, for example, he takes knight takes, knight f6, knight c3, and there's so many different ways for black to play here, but the main principle is going to still be 
no matter how black plays, that black will have an extra center pawn to compensate for the activity of white's pieces. Active knight, active bishops. Okay, so let's move on to the crouch openings. So we'll begin with the French. The French is my favorite because you can easily summarize it in three sentences. Um, what, what are we doing? First, uh, we're putting a very solid foundation in the center with d5, and our only the only deficiency of that is our bishop on c8 is a little cramped. Okay, so the idea is this: we're going to force a decision from White of what he's going to do with this pawn. Okay, now if he takes it. Then he's still up a temple, but our bishop is free. If he pushes it, then black can have a different strategy of attacking the center. Like this. And notice black is even up a temple at this point. He's got more, one more, it's his move and he's already got a piece out. In compensation, white has some space. And hopefully we'll we'll have time to talk about the French and all these openings a little bit later. Okay, let's look at the next crouch opening. The Karl Khan. Now the idea of the Karl Khan really is to get this foundation on D five without having your bishop on C eight to suffer. The disadvantage, however, is that after a move like knight c3, the only way black can properly bring out his pieces is to give up his big center pawn. And here there's many different ways for black to play. But the point will always be that white will have a strong center pawn, whereas black won't. But black, on the other hand, will be able to develop all of his pieces fairly naturally. For example... And so, and black's going to bring out his knight to f6, the pawn to e6, and the bishop on f8 will find a home on that diagonal. Right here. Okay, good. Let's go back. Okay, so let's look at the next class of openings. Notice, in the traditional openings, the e5 and c5, black is fighting for space very quickly, not ceding anything to white. In the crouch openings, black was willing to give up some space to white. In the case of the Karl Khan, we gave up a center pawn, and in the case of the French, we allowed him to advance his pawn to e5, gaining uh, space, especially on the king side. The hypermodern openings have a totally different idea behind them. Their idea is to attack the center from the sides, and even to encourage white, to encourage his aggression in the center. For example, let's look at the perk. D6. Remember, any move that controls the center and, and helps develop your pieces is going to be a good move. For example, this move controls E5 and enables the bishop to get out. Okay, so D4 would be a logical move from white. Knight f6, knight c3, g6. So black's plan is very simple. He's going to put his bishop on g7. He's going to castle. And then he's going to wait to see what white does. And notice that what he did was he gave white the entire center in terms of the pawns. Right? And there's no pawn, no black pawn in the center. Black's going to let white come in the center. And his idea is that hopefully he'll be able to come up with some kind of counterplay against these big pawns in the center. And he has a variety of plans that he can use at any point. He can push the pawn to e5 if he chooses, the pawn to c5. Here he can wait, he can play c6, he can break with d5. Very flexible. But the basic idea is this. I've, Black has only made two pawn moves, and the rest of his moves for the foreseeable future will all be developing moves. Okay. The 
The next hypermodern opening I'd like to look at is night at six. This is called the Alekhine's Defense, or Alyokhin, as the Russians call him. And it's a very controversial move because, yes, you're attacking the pawn, but this pawn is going to advance and kick the knight on f6. Now, the idea of this opening is to say, well, your pawn move to e5 wasn't actually a developing move. Only peace moves are developing moves. And furthermore, what Black will say is that Black will be able to try to undermine this pawn on e5. For example, d4, d6. And now, after a move like um, knight f3, we have many options. But one, for example, would just be the simple bishop g4. And we're fighting for the center. We're fighting for this pawn. We've encouraged him forward, and now we're going to try to take him out in the center. Okay. So, that leaves one opening. It's in a class all by itself, really. The center counter. Okay. So, the center counter is actually a very good way to meet e4. Um, it has a bad reputation because it seems like this queen is going to have to come out and then it will be harassed uh, with loss of time. However, if we step back a moment, what we'll see is that with d5, what black is doing is he's completely undermining the power of this e4 pawn in the center, which in all of the other openings we've looked at will always play a force. But here, that pawn is just going to be taken out immediately. Okay, so let's take a look. Pawn takes, now, clearly on queen takes, knight c3, queen a5, white has an advantage in time. But, on the other hand, he doesn't have this pawn, and it's not so easy. For example, it could go knight f3, knight f6, bishop c4, bishop f5. All of black's pieces are still going to come out in very natural ways. And the only thing white can hope for is to try to use the time advantage and the fact that this queen might be a little bit precariously situated. If black wants to avoid all that, he has a very simple option, and he could just play knight f6. Very nice, beautiful, developing move. And it's actually and it's very hard for white to get an advantage here. For example, c4, black can even play c6. We can give up the pawn because pawn takes, knight takes, and black has beautiful development. For example, knight f3, e5. We control d4. All of our pieces are coming out. This bishop is blocked in by its own pawn here on c4. Beautiful piece development for black. So, to summarize, e4 is probably the most aggressive attempt on white's part to gain an opening advantage. Why? Well, because after you've played e4, since your queen is behind the d-pawn, you're going to be in a much stronger position to push this pawn next move. Whereas if you push d4 immediately, black will stop you. He'll stop you from playing e4, at least in many cases. So, to review, all of these moves, e5, c5, c6, e6, knight f6, d6, d5, they're all going to be reasonable moves on the very simple principle that any move that fights for the center and helps you bring your pieces out cannot be a bad move. So, I hope you've gotten something out of this, and hopefully you'll be able to choose one of these that suits your style and opening against e4 Probably when you go to your chess club, that's going to be the move that you'll encounter the most frequently. So, I, wish, I hope this has served you well, and we'll look forward to studying a lot of these openings we've looked at briefly in more depth.